Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are standing in my kitchen because we are going to be talking about my new bread machine. I recently told you in a grocery haul that I'll link right here that I got a new bread machine and I had a few of you in the comments asking for me to show you a recipe and which bread maker I got and that kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If you want to get the same one, the CBK100 series. And it came with this recipe booklet, which is what I've been using right now. I figured I'd try the ones that I think um, will be good out of here. And then later on, maybe I'll get on Pinterest and um, explore some. So the recipe that I've been making that I like, that I figured out how to make, is this honey or basic honey whole wheat. So I thought I would just share that with you guys today. All right, so I'm going to try to get the best angles that I can for you guys here. So basically, um, this is what it looks like. This just twists to come out. Inside of here, there is um, the kneading paddle. There you go. That's what it's called. Um, so it just slides on there. This you want to make sure is secure. So you just push it down in there and then twist it. Which the camera's kind of in the way. There we go. So you can feel it tighten up and that it's secure. So then it'll tell you on your recipe, but you want to put the ingredients in the order listed which is important. So the first ingredient, I'm making the one and a half pound um, loaf, and the first ingredient is the one cup of room temperature water. So I'm just gonna pour that in there with my hook or paddle already in there. And then one and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I've shown these on my channel before. This um, is just a marble salt. I have one that matches that says pepper that I'll link down below. You guys always ask me about these. So that is need one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of unsalted room temperature butter cut up. So I just cut it into little chunks like this. And I bought these little, um, they're actually measuring cups at Target. They're in the Magnolia Home line. They're all stuck together. I just kind of spread it, like flick them all throughout the bottom of that. So that's two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And then the honey is one and a half tablespoons. I'm using this. It's not super local. Um, the place I normally get it was out, but they had this. It's just honey from Arkansas. So one and a half tablespoons. And honey is such a sticky mess that I'm just gonna kind of estimate it. And then the next that we need is bread flour, which I'm just gonna measure it from the bag. So this is the bread flour I'm using, if I can get it in there. Um, it is important that you use bread flour and whole wheat in this recipe and not all purpose. It won't come out the way you want it to if you use all purpose. So this is a quarter of a cup. And this is one cup, so all together it is one and a quarter cup. And then for the whole wheat flour, I'm using this um, Bob's Red Mill 100% uh, stone ground whole wheat. You can see that there. You don't need to use this kind. It was a really good deal at Kroger. And this is two cups. And I just kind of try to like spread it out evenly. Um, over it, you want the flour to be covering pretty much all the liquid. So that gives you an idea of how to do it in there. Oh no, I missed part of my butter. There's a little butter stuck in there. I'm just gonna push some of this flour aside and I'm gonna stick my piece of butter down in that liquid. Oopsie. Didn't even notice that when I was putting the butter in. Okay, moving on to the yeast. I buy my yeast in bulk at Sam's Club, so I've got it, um, I keep it in an airtight container in the fridge, and I just measure it out, which is what I have here, which is two and a quarter teaspoons. But I had an extra one in my pantry and I wanted to show it to you guys what the packaging looks like in case um, you were confused about what kind to buy at the store or something. So this is instant dry yeast. They make it in um, fast acting instant dry yeast. They make it in like little um, bags that you just tear, um, tear and you pour it out. Just make sure that you are using the correct amount of yeast for the 
um, size of loaf you're making, but that's definitely an option. But this is, is a super good deal at Sam's Club, and they come in these like super tight um, container, like bricks that stay good. And so I just open one, stick it in my fridge, and make sure it's airtight in your fridge, and it'll stay good in there for at least a few months. Um, so yeah. But this is the um, yeast that we need for this, which is two and a quarter teaspoons. So this I just sprinkle all over that top of that flour. So this is what it will look like whenever it is all done. So then what I do is get the flour out of the, out of that, I don't know how that got there. Okay, so I'm just gonna close this. And then up here, you can play with this. So see here menu, it says three. Down here, you'll see that it says whole wheat three. So that's on the right setting, because that's usually the bread I make. So then loaf size, you'll want to change it to the correct size of loaf. I'm making a one and a half pound loaf. And then we like the medium skin, or medium skin, medium uh, colored crust. So I'm gonna leave that right there. Then you just come all the way down to the bottom and hit start. And then it's gonna tell you how long it's gonna take to bake. So it's gonna take four hours and 35 minutes. So I wanted to talk to you about the bread maker. So what got me when I first started using it, and I probably wouldn't have had this problem if I had looked in the owner's manual and read it, but so there's two series of beeps. So it will beep, and that is the mix-in beep. So if you wanted to add something to it, like um, a fruit or oatmeal or something like that, then that would be the beep that you would add that in and then it stops and then it keeps going and there's a second beep and that's the beep that you take the paddle out which you can leave it in um, I've I did that the first time I made it I didn't take the paddle out and all it does is there's whenever you take it out there's kind of a chunk in the bottom of the loaf that's missing it's just um, like it's not, it doesn't make it taste different it's just more of like the, the loaf doesn't look as pretty um, so that's that beep and then um, the third beep is that it's done baking so keep that in mind and then when you take the paddle out you can reshape the the loaf basically the size of the bread is finished baking and I was going to show you what it looked like and how I take it out it looks a little wonky um, I was outside on a phone call and when it beeped the second time for me to take the paddle out and when I came in I was like did it beep I don't know did it beep so let me see and I um, thought about taking it out and I touched one side of it and it fell a little bit and then it started its bake cycle so uh, it's fine it just isn't like an even <laughs> top of it um, so yeah so I'd let you guys know why it's kind of sliding to one side um, so um, you need a cooling rack and so this is hot this like little handle um, I mean, this just got done baking, so imagine it like as if you just took it out of the oven. It would obviously be hot. So then I just twist it until you can kind of feel it loosen up, and then it just pulls out like this. So then I like to just kind of lay it on its side, and then I grab the bottom and kind of knead it um, with the rack. And then I kind of shake it. Oh, it's because the hook, the paddle's in there. There we go. Okay, so... You leave the paddle in, this is what the bottom of the bread looks like, so there's a big hole right there. You can tell that that's where the paddle was, um, so that was baking in the bottom of the bread. So, I shouldn't have gone out and made that phone call when I did, obviously, but it is what it is. So, um, but it's fine, it'll taste just fine, it'll slice up just fine. This middle slice probably won't make a good sandwich bread, I'll just eat that with some butter. This is what the top of the bread looks like so as you can see it's kind of sliding to one side if I hadn't touched this um, while it was rising it wouldn't have fallen and it would be a nice level loaf but anyway um, this is what it looks like this is the crust color so I'm gonna let this totally cool to room temperature and then I'm going to stick it in a gallon Ziploc bag and Sorry, Terry Tots banging on the door. And just leave it overnight. And then in the morning, I'll get a cutting board out and a bread knife. You don't want to cut it with like a flat knife. You want it to be a bread knife. That's not even my bread knife. Where is my bread knife? Something like this with a serrated edge. So 
definitely and then just um, slide it back and forth when you're cutting it don't just push down and take your time and just cut it slow and you'll be able to get those nice pretty thin sandwich slices so that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow and I hope y'all have a blessed day and I'll talk to you in the next one don't forget to subscribe bye guys